This is the Patagonia Better Sweater Fleece Vest. At $99, it is by far one of the brand's most popular products. It's also one of its most divisive. The fleece zip vest has cemented its place in finance and tech offices from New York to San Francisco. The company says that at its height, it was fielding 60 requests for co-branded vests a day. But Patagonia, a private company that values environmental and political activism, never sought out to become the go-to status symbol for some of the biggest and richest companies in the world. I don't necessarily think that was an intentional target market by, you know, on Patagonia's part. The combination of hefty price tags and a professional class of superfans earned Patagonia the nickname Patagucci, prompting the organization to reevaluate which companies it allows to put a moniker on the vest as a way to ensure that their partners align with their progressive culture. Patagonia even discouraged consumers from partaking in Black Friday sales and snuck political messages into the tags of its clothing. They have really taken a stand on Black Friday and not wanted to participate in the, uh, in the orgy of uh, consumerism that Black Friday has become. Here's how Patagonia's anti-consumption philosophy helped it build a billion dollar brand. This is Suddenly Obsessed. Patagonia was founded by climber and outdoor enthusiast Yvonne Schwinard, who started making pitons, or climbing spikes, out of his parents' backyard in the 1950s. He and his partner Tom Frost grew the makeshift operation into the largest supplier of climbing equipment in the U.S. In 1973, Schwinard equipment started selling rugby shirts. A super heavy cotton, super nice quality. The knit shirts became so popular they eventually created an entire line of outdoor apparel. Those vintage items are extremely sought after today. Vintage store owner Drew Heifetz says he spent about $20,000 collecting rare Patagonia pieces over the last decade. I actually found one of those rugby shirts. It still has the Umbro tag, but it has a Schwinard tag. I think I spent about $400 on that piece. But since those early days, Patagonia has grown into an all-encompassing outdoor juggernaut. Besides apparel, Patagonia sells sleeping bags, cookware for camping, baby clothes and wetsuits, it even created a food line called Patagonia Provisions, where it sells everything from seafood and buffalo jerky to organic coffee and beer, all with the Patagonia branding. Today, Patagonia is one of the leading brands in the outdoor apparel market, with over 30 retail locations and nearly a billion dollars in sales. To be sure, Patagonia is still known for outfitting climbers, hikers, skiers, and surfers in highly technical gear. But over the past decade, the company has found more customers wearing Patagonia for its fashion rather than its function. Patagonia didn't necessarily make that transition as part of a set strategy. Experts say it happened organically as the company introduced more colors and patterns to their neutral earth tone products. The new colors and patterns generated new demand and a new type of customer. Nothing signified the change in Patagonia's customer base like the better sweater fleece vest. There was a three-year stretch during the 2010s when the fleece vest became an unofficial uniform in finance and tech, leading to nicknames like Patagucci and Fratagonia. It's an all-season staple. It even inspired a New York City-based Instagram page, Midtown Uniform, that boasts over 169,000 followers. And although the surge in popularity of the vest may have ultimately attracted more business, Patagonia wasn't necessarily thrilled with the way that the public was linking it with companies whose business practices were encountering to Patagonia's sense of environmental responsibility. I just feel this is a little bit too far. It's a little bit too proactive. There's a sense behind this that, that they're saying companies have to prove to us that they're saints in order to earn the right to be our customer. Uh, which... It seems like they're going to miss out on a lot of revenue. The, the purpose of a co-branding is to align with other organizations that you either feel compatible with or that you actively support. The strong demand for the vest gave Patagonia leverage to ensure its corporate sponsors were aligned with its values. What it does do, though, is put pressure on companies and corporations to move forward in a way that aligns based on values. Stanley says that the decision to trim the number of branded vests was also influenced by the sheer volume of requests. There simply was too much demand. I think at one point we were getting 60, 60 new requests a day. While the company is shying away from co-branding, it's leaning into another market segment that has little to do with the great outdoors, streetwear. 
the Deep Pile Patagonia Retro X jacket. I really dig this. Patagonia wasn't really a brand back in the day that I would you know, gravitate towards just because it kind of had more of like an outdoorsy hiking aesthetic compared to what I usually wear, which is streetwear. When it comes to their fleece, their more cozier pieces, I'm all for that. The brand has been spotted on the likes of Drake, Kendall Jenner, and even Prince Harry. But Patagonia's entry into the mainstream has been due in large part to the changing tastes of millennials and Gen Z. Experts say younger generations seem more likely to support brands whose stance on the environment aligns with theirs. This is the, the group that has really shown the most passion for things like environmental change. It's cool to care about the environment and it's become cool to support change and try to do something that's better for the world and better for the country. So I think that's where you see it bleed into streetwear a little bit. Vincent Stanley claims that Patagonia never sought out to be considered cool, but that the combination of fashion forward designs and durable yet sustainable materials built a passionate following. Once you get their product, you just, you know, I guess fall in love with it. And then from there, you want to kind of know more about the brand. And after that, you see that the brand is, you know, sustainable. But Patagonia says it doesn't see fast fashion or fleeting trends as a path to long-term success. Some of the, uh, the extra business is welcome, uh, but we don't rely on it for, for the future. And in contrast to brands like Supreme, whose model of exclusivity brings in new products every drop, Hype beasts looking to buy Patagonia tend to go for older and second-hand pieces. Mine is second-hand and it is in great condition. But like most everything that goes mainstream, some Patagonia diehards miss the exclusiveness that Patagonia used to represent. It is almost kind of sad that Patagonia has become so popular in fashion and just in general consumption that it's lost a little bit of that, like, I'm in the club kind of feeling. While some companies talk a big game when it comes to sustainability, Patagonia actually walks the walk. In 2011, the company went as far as to run a full-page Black Friday ad in the New York Times that read, quote, don't buy this jacket, with a photo of one of their products. The purpose of the ad was to um, talk about the environmental impact of making clothes even from a company that does as much as it can to reduce its impact there are limits they have really taken a stand on black friday and not wanting to participate in the uh, in the orgy of uh, consumerism that black friday has become the ad helped call attention to their common threads initiative now called the worn wear program which encourages repairs to or trade-ins of older products since 2005 they've repaired over 415,000 garments. And it seems to be paying off. Experts say that Patagonia's commitment to sustainability and activism is setting it apart from its competitors. What separates Patagonia from the other big three brands to me is the story and their commitment to the planet, the way they don't take it so seriously per se, and they have more fun with it. But Patagonia's commitment to the planet doesn't come cheap. These new technologies are really expensive, so we do have to figure out the pricing structure, which can be pretty complex. Over the last 10 years, Patagonia has transitioned from being a company that supports activists to being an activist company, says Stanley. And it's not shy about it. In 2020, the company put the phrase, quote, vote the assholes out on some of its tags. The private company isn't afraid to take a political stand, even if it means potentially alienating a portion of its customer base. We're always sorry to lose a customer or to lose a friend, and we, we are concerned about that. But we've also uh, gained a lot of customers on the basis of shared value. Though Patagonia has leaned in heavily on activism, people still love it even if they don't necessarily agree with its politics. We need companies like Patagonia and visionaries like Yvonne that are going to stick to their guns and like try to create a better planet.